Welcome traders to this week's weekly live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Um, just before we get going, just want to do a quick sound check. If you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, uh, the tick in the welcome screen, if you just type a Y in the chat box so that I know we're, uh, we're ready to, uh, to get going. Okay, so before we jump into today's discussion, first of all, we want to just quickly remind ourselves of the, uh, the disclaimer here. What's uh, most relevant with respect to today's content is that the views expressed by me today are solely mine. They are not indicative or representative of Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. So for those of you who are here for the first time, just a brief introduction to myself. Um, after I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. After a few years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time in my hands, I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling, uh, the S&P. And after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what would become uh, significant losing positions. I eventually gave back all the gains I'd made and ultimately took a significant six figure hit on my personal capital. Uh, to say this was a gut wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. And I really had to, to stand back from the markets and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from trading. So I decided to get serious and sought out a mentor who displayed or, uh, an excellent trading track record in, uh, in an idea to, to model their behavior. I worked with my mentor for a period of 18 months, to two years. Uh, during this time, I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a, a strategy that importantly suited my personality. I extensively back and forward tested the strategy, developing a rigorous risk management approach to underpin it. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift I made was from being a highly goal orientated uh, individual focused on financial gains to really becoming a purely process orientated individual. Uh, what does that mean? Well, actually, it means that I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emo emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a bunch of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my trading edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through my managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. And you can see on the screen the uh, performance data for that managed account service. Uh, since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I have provided uh, content to numerous brokers and trading education brands, uh, webinars, live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert at Ticknell, uh, providing market and trade analysis on a daily basis. If you want to, uh, to get the notifications on those, you can register your email address on the Ticknell blog and you will get the, uh, my daily updates. Um, my other passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading education brand called FX Career Swap offering development and more importantly, funding to retail trading talents. So FX CareerSwap, we don't just develop retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge. 
we work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates in successful candidates managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. For those who are interested in learning more about what we do at FX Career Swap, uh, there's a number on there. You can call the desk in London and one of the guys will, uh, will help you out in terms of uh, additional information. Or you can send an email to info at fxcareerswap.com and, uh, and the guys will get back to you in a timely fashion. Okay, so um, that uh, is a flavor of my background and where I'm coming from. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to walk through about 26 instruments looking at the intraday on the four hour time frame, uh, the intraday wave structure, and where we can identify some potential high probability trading opportunities off of the current, uh, the current market structure. So we're going to start with the dollar index. Before I jump into the dollar index, I just want to pull up uh, a note here I shared with the guys on the trading floor this morning. Um, this is to do with options flow in the foreign exchange market. And for those who aren't familiar with options, options are the derivative of the spot price, um, and it allows uh, players to take significant positions in the market uh, with a fixed capital risk. And so, um, just shared this this morning with the guys that the, uh, we, the, the recent strength we, should, we saw in the dollar, I, to my mind, was a, was a positioning washout. And what we're seeing now is a return to um, positioning, which would suggest that over the next one to three months, well, uh, sorry, one, three and 12 month period, we can anticipate to see additional dollar weakness uh, when we track the uh, relationship of the um, puts, puts are bets on the downside and calls, which are bets on the upside in a, in a currency. And we can see here that we are now seeing um, over all tenors, one, three and 12 month period, that the market, the options market is suggesting we'll see further upside in the euro versus the dollar. The euro dollar contract obviously being the biggest uh, FX flow in terms of that space. So uh, that's just an interesting note there that I shared with the guys this morning on the floor who, um, who get this type of information daily through, uh, through the trading floor at FX Career Swap. Um, so that being said, let's take a look now at the actual technical setup that we're seeing in the dollar. And uh, for those who were here last week, you'll know that I was, uh, I was getting bearish again in terms of the dollar index as we completed what I thought was uh, a corrective uh, ABC, a quality, ABC a quality objective into this 9130, 9179 area, a nice reversal pattern. Um, we got short last week and uh, have taken profits on the initial leg here, because where I think we are now, we're probably coming in to complete this initial impulse leg off these low, off these highs. So the red arrow here is, is giving me is giving the, the trend up direction I think we're heading in now. Um, if this leg is impulsive, then what can we reasonably expect? Well, we can reasonably expect a corrective phase. And what we're always looking for is an ABC correction, ideally a quality setup. Um, so to my mind at the moment, I think we see one more leg to the downside, ideally get a test of this 90 level, build in some divergence here on our psych indicator. And then that should set up the completion of this initial impulse move in the dollar. And then we should see a three wave correction. And I'd really like to see the dollar index trade back into this 9089, 91 area. And I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns on the four hour time frame to set short positions. And then I think we are set up to challenge and if not exceed the 8922 low. So that's the, that's the play here in terms of the dollar. And this is obviously going to feed into a bunch of instruments, but we'll run through and we'll identify now those levels where we want to re-engage uh, the dollar index. Or, oh, sorry, re-engage the dollar on the short side. Uh, what we have here are the bonds. And obviously we know that uh, in terms of bonds and yields, uh, when, price, when the price of a bond is, uh, is increasing, the yield on the bond is decreasing. And that impacts FX flows. And so what we've got here is we've got the bonds looking for uh, another leg higher to test this descending trend line resistance, bearish bond prices versus this swing high here at 137.21. So what I've been looking for here is the bonds to basically correct this initial decline that we saw here and we subdivided nicely into five waves, we've got that divergence on the fifth wave low. And now we're looking for a test of this descending trend line in an ABC corrective pattern and uh, watch for bearish reversal patterns at this 137.08 level uh, to set short positions looking for a retest and if not uh, to exceed 
prior lows. So then if we look at yields, obviously yields trading inversely to, uh, to bonds. And so what we've got here, uh, five way, a five-way pattern to the upside, and I'm now looking for an ABC corrective move, uh, currently looking at something into this 1% level. And then I think we get a test up into this 1.25, 1.26, this ascending trend line resistance versus, uh, versus the swing lows. And I think there, from there, we can see uh, we can see another pullback in terms of yield. Moving to the euro dollar. So I think we've completed a correction in, in terms of the euro on the daily time frame. We're obviously looking at the intraday here to, to try and pinpoint some entry potential entry levels. So I'm bullish the euro now versus uh, this 1957 low. And we can see now we've got a nice five-way pattern developing here. We're just looking to take out highs. So I'm going to suggest that we've potentially got our way for low in place here. And as we take out these highs, I'm looking for a test now of 121.80, uh, weekly projected range resistance coming at 122.05. And what I'd like to see now are some bearish reversal patterns as we trade up into this area. We should um, maintain. What we very important for me if I'm going to trade counter trend. Is what I don't want to see, um, or, or sorry, what I what will mean that I wouldn't be taking a counter trend trade is if when we move into this wave five upside objective, if we take out the prior highs in terms of the psych indicator, that will re that will remove or, re or void the current divergence setup that we could have here, and so that if 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 that's the setup, um, and this when we trade into this wave five target zone and we make a new high in terms of psych indicator, then that negates the idea that I'd be looking to fade this strength. But at the moment, this move, I'm looking for it to terminate in this 121, 120, uh, 122, 180, 122 area. And if we get into here, we get a bearish reversal pattern and we haven't made a new high in psych, that gives me the go ahead to take a counter trend trade. And what I'd be looking for there is, uh, uh, it's an ABC corrective pattern. And if we get this reversal here, ideally what I'd be looking for is a move back into 120, 50, 120, 70 area. And then that will give us the opportunity as uh, we have to obviously watch how price develops. That'll give us the opportunity then to set up our target to, to re-engage the market on the long side, looking for, uh, looking for higher prices versus this swing low here. So let's check in with Sterling. Sterling's obviously been on a tear and um, supported it for those who joined us yesterday uh, uh, for the uh, pandemic debate, uh, supported really by the idea that the UK are, uh, are exceeding their European counterparts in terms of uh, vaccine rollouts. And so we can see here versus the, uh, versus the low 135.64 that we have an impulsive move. I think we've, uh, we've just completed uh, wave four here. And so I'm looking for a wave five extension now. Um, Obviously, again, what I want to do is what, when we've completed the wave four, I'm looking to pay attention to the position of, uh, of the psych indicator because where we've got that peak there, that would that, that uh, supports the idea of a wave three high. So what I'm looking for now is we trade higher up into uh, 139, uh, 139, uh, sorry, 138.90, we yeah, 139. That's the daily range resistance. We've also got monthly and weekly range resistance here, 138.70. So anywhere in this zone now, if we get a bearish reversal pattern and we don't make a new high in terms of psych, then I'm going to be looking at a uh, tactical counter trend trade on the short side in terms of sterling. And the, the target for this, for this pullback for me will be these prior highs here at 137.50 which uh, was the, the technical range resistance that we broke out of. So any three-way pullback into that area with bullish reversal patterns will then allow me to join the trend, the dominant trend, which is to the upside. So watching for bearish reversal patterns in this zone, set, set those short positions, and then I'm going to be targeting 137.50, where I'll look to potentially reverse those positions with bullish reversal patterns. Ultimately, I'm looking for a move up to test towards 140 in sterling. Dollar yen had this position running uh, last week on the short side and uh, and took profits on that earlier in the week. So again, versus this swing high here, I'm bearish the dollar yen on uh, as this corrective pattern completed. Um, and now what I'm looking for is a, a three four to complete here and then get that fifth wave test, ideally down into this uh, 104.20 area. And then again, what I'll do is if we have divergence here in terms of our psych indicator, 
then again, that's going to allow for the opportunity to play a counter trend long position here in dollar yen. And what's the target? Well, it's going to be an ABC corrective pattern uh, versus the current setup. I've been looking for something above uh, 105.10, 105.20 for that to terminate. And then again, we watch for bearish reversal patterns on the four hour time frame, set short positions, and, uh, and we could be heading certainly back into 103.40. And, uh, and down towards 102 is the game plan there versus this swing high at 105.80. The Aussie dollar. So bullish structure in terms of the Aussie dollar, for those who follow my daily market analysis, you'll know that I've been, uh, I've been looking for an impulse to develop here uh, because I think we have a, a, a or a track or probable price path to get towards the 80 cents level in terms of the Aussie. So again, we've got a nice five-way pattern here. I'm looking for that to complete uh, into these prior resistance area here, uh, 77, 80, 78 level. And uh, importantly, again, what we want to pay attention to is this potential divergence, which will allow me to play a counter trend short position with the once I get a bearish reversal pattern on the four hour time frame, And what I've been looking for obviously is the corrective pattern and that versus the current, this current structure here, um, I'd look for that to complete into the 76, 70 area. And again, then what I'd be looking for bullish reversal patterns to get in on the long side, targeting a break of the prior highs on route to that, set, uh, on route to that 80 cents upside objective. Kiwi dollar. A little bit more complex in terms of the Kiwi price action here, um, but ultimately we've taken out that descending trend line. I was looking for potential for us to get another test here into the ascending trend line and the, uh, the pivot point here, maybe we're not gonna see that. And if so, what do we do? Well, if, um, if we take out the highs, let me just move this. What we can say to ourselves then is this correction did complete on that first test of the, um, of the trend line. So we have the ABC, correction complete. And then what we'd be looking to do would be to buy a break of the prior highs to set up that move to retest uh, 73.15 um, en route to the 74.50 that I'm looking for in terms of the Kiwi. So we'll see how we trade here as we head into the, uh, the US session, but there's the potential to, uh, to potentially get long here, the Kiwi. Um, want to pay attention, obviously, when we see these, uh, these daily range resistance, weekly range resistance, 7260, heading into the, um, the back end of the week, it might be that we get up into this area and see another pullback before we make that extension. So it, I don't, not necessarily enamored or enthused by buying, it, buying into uh, this resistance, this projected range resistance area here. So I'll see how, uh, see how we trade there. But ultimately, I believe that the Kiwi is going to, uh, going to trade higher here in terms of the uh, structure setup. And then obviously that feeds in to a, um, a lower, uh, lower loony. I think, uh, I think what I'm looking for here is a test into uh, this prior descending trend line resistance to act as support. Set up a wave three low here, I think. Um, and again, what, what am I paying attention to? Well, we want to see this, uh, this divergence continue to hold. And um, if it does, then there'll be opportunity here to, to play a game, counter trend tactical position are looking for a three wave correction and versus this current setup i'd anticipate we can get back into this 127.40 127.60 area before we uh, we resume to the downside for a wave five either to retest or exceed those prior lows at 125.88 swissy as i said last week had this one running uh, took profit uh as we traded down into this trend line. So again, versus this swing high now, I think we have an impulse leg developing. I'd like to see a move down into, uh, certainly into the projected monthly and weekly range support, 88.70 area, or even down here into the daily range support, 88.50. So we've got a 20 pip target zone here for this wave four, uh, sorry, for this wave five to complete. Uh, what I want to obviously make sure that we have this divergence in play as we get in here, because there is an opportunity then to play the counter trend on the long side, looking for that corrective move before looking to re-engage this on the short side once that correction plays out. So that's, uh, we'll see, we, this is the zone I'm gonna be watching this afternoon, looking for bullish reversal patterns to get in on the long side in terms of the uh, Swissy this time, and looking to play that counter trend move. 
Still again, <coughs> advancing in a wedge here. And um, I still think we have room to go. So whilst we hold uh, this 144.52, I'm looking for another move to test this uh, projected daily range resistance and the ascending trend line resistance, 145.50 area. And again, with divergence, and this is one that we're getting plenty of divergence in, um, I've been watching for bearish reversal patterns set to look to get short and uh, certainly get a retest of the trend line support here down to uh, 144. We may actually get a bit lower in terms of, uh, in terms of this sterling yen, given this uh, squeeze we're seeing in the wedge here. So um, watching as we get into this area, 145.40 to 145.60, watch for those bearish reversal patterns, given that we've got this great divergence down here in terms of uh, sentiment and momentum, then that's gonna be an opportunity to do something on the short side and certainly we can think in terms of testing uh, the ascending trend line resistance, like I say, high 143 area. Euro yen, <coughs> a little bit more uh, choppy, but ultimately what I'm looking for in the euro yen is a break through this triangle resistance. Uh, Earlier when I was marking the chart up, I was actually looking to see if we get another test of the trend, uh, ascending trend line support. Maybe we're not gonna see that. If we don't see that, then the play is, is, uh, is pretty simple. We'll just get rid of that's what you're looking for is a break and then a retest of the trend line uh, that holds, get a bullish reversal pattern, and then you can join this emerging trend in terms of, uh, in terms of the euro yen. So that's one that I'm going to be keeping, uh, keeping an eye on. Two, so the two areas of interest really are, are back at a retest of the sending trend line support or a, a breach and pullback to get in on the, on the long side. Aussie yen breaking higher. So I'm looking for a wave five here to complete uh, as we break out of this consolidation zone. You can see we're gonna get some, potentially get some really nice divergence here. So where I'm looking at the moment is this is the monthly projected range resistance, 81.60 up to even to 82. So any reversal patterns in this area, so four hour candle rejections here will be an opportunity to do something on the short side. And I think we can easily get back into prior range highs at the 80.30. Maybe this ascending trend line gets test at 80, uh, 60. Euro Aussie. Looking, uh, well, I was looking for a, another corrected leg here before we, uh, before we break lows here. It might be that the wave four has completed with this move. If that's the case, then I look for the wave five down here into projected monthly range support and uh, projected weekly range support. And then I think we can look to, uh, to potentially try and fade this, uh, this move with, uh, again, bags of divergence here. So um, I, don't, I don't anticipate at this juncture that we're gonna make new lows in terms of psych indicators. So that being the case, watch for bullish reversal patterns as an opportunity to play a counter trend long in terms of the, um, in terms of the Euro Aussie. So watching this 155 area, if we take out the, uh, the lows here at 156.16. Euro sterling. This one's starting to, I'm, I'm going to start to track Euro sterling a bit cl more closely now as we're coming into that weekly target that I had for Euro sterling at this uh, low 86 level. If we can get a move down into here, uh, like I say, we'll have, we should have plenty of divergence. I think that's going to complete a major leg. And on the weekly charts, if you, uh, if, if you have, actually, I'll pull up into uh, Euro sterling. Let's go to it so we can see what I'm talking about. So what we'll get here with this euro sterling, hopefully, is a test of this uh, major weekly trend line support coming in at the, just ahead of the 86 level. So current setup here is that we, uh, we're in a wave three, four in this uh, descending wedge pattern. This is all technically really nice setup. What we'd look for is an exhaustion move to the downside where we take out the ascending trend line support, really uh, see the market get short there. And then what we're watching for are these bullish reversal patterns. We'll have, we have plenty of divergence to play with. Uh, bullish reversal patterns set long positions. And really what I'd be looking for really with Euro sterling is potentially setting some positions that I would hold because I think we could see a major low in place here if that trend line holds and we get the reversal um, and we could, uh, we could have something uh, that could be a few hundred pips in terms of upside 
uh, with this euro sterling. So this is one that is certainly, it's not one I've been paying, from a trading perspective, paying much interest to uh, recently because of the waiting for that trend line test. Now we, we look like we're setting up perfectly for that test and uh, I'll be watching for reversal patterns to, uh, to jump into that on the long side. Sterling Kiwi, this is, uh, this is one I've talked about a, a few times now, where, uh, where I potentially see this double bottom and an inverse head and shoulders pattern developing. Uh, so I'm watching to see if we can hold some support, uh, probably down here into this 190.50 area. And if we can and we get bullish reversal patterns, then I'm going to be looking to play a break, uh, a bullish reversal pattern from this support area to certainly target this 193, which I think is going to be pivotal. And if we get through 193, then um, that opens up quite a bit of upside in terms of uh, Sterling Kiwi. But if we get rejected here at this 193 and we hold this resistance, uh, we could actually have completed what is a pretty complex corrective pattern and we could be heading, uh, could be heading lower in terms of Sterling Kiwi. So watching the 190.50, if we can get, uh, if we see some reversal patterns there, uh, to play for 193 and then see how the market trades and get up into that zone. Now on to the equity markets. And uh, similarly here, I think we're in, we're getting pretty close to, uh, to exhaustion phase. If uh, I posted on the blog today, my, uh, the chart of the day, uh, or oh, sorry, the chart hit that I do the video uh, talking about the levels that are of interest to me. We could get a marginal new high here. That's not, um, that wouldn't, uh, that wouldn't, discourage my view here. If we do get a marginal new high, you can see we're going to have plenty of divergence in terms of site. So watch for the reversal patterns. I think ultimately we're heading for a test at the moment for 38.20 um, in terms of these futures. And so I'm watching for, uh, for an entry to, uh, to play for this move. Um, not that I'm uber bearish. I just think we're, we're, we're due a correction here versus this impulse. We're trading into that 139.25 target area. Um, which would uh, which would complete this impulse leg, and um, and we've got the daily range resistance coming in one uh, thirty nine thirty six. So I'm uh, I'm paying close attention to those for a correction in terms of these equity markets. Similarly here with the Dow, uh, I think the Dow is what's probably dragging this S and P high because it hasn't completed its pattern just yet. So I'm looking for a test of uh, thirty one sixty four. Uh, up to 31,700 uh, 31, and you can see we'll have nice divergence there and watch for those reversal patterns again looking to play for a correction. DAX, I think DAX has maybe completed its correction and, uh, and we could see new highs here so if we take out uh, 14,100 then, uh, then I think we're heading 14,300 in terms of the DAX. Once we get up there again paying attention to the divergence because I think from there we could see uh, another pullback in terms of the DAX. The Nikkei really been leading the equity markets. Um, could have given, I, I was looking for another leg here back to retest these prior highs at the 28,996 level, but it could be that we have uh, a completed an ABC correction here. So that would be our wave four low in place. And then we're looking for the extension, the wave five extension. I've been looking for a move up into this uh, 30,000 level, and maybe then from there, we're gonna see that uh, a little bit more juicy correction as we retest the break point here down to 28,900. And again, watching for the divergence, we potentially get a triple divergence in terms of making a new high in price and a third failure to make a new high from the momentum perspective. So uh, interesting opportunities in, uh, in, this, in the Nikkei there. Uh, the FTSE, I think the FTSE could be in the uh, in the first leg of uh, of a move to test the 7,000 level. Uh, so the the opportunity here will be watching for uh, an equality objective somewhere around into this 64, 66 area, 64, 80 bullish reversal patterns. I think are an interesting opportunity on the long side. I'm looking for a 7,000 test, and uh, and then from there I think we can see a more meaningful correction in terms of the FTSE. Just finishing into the commodity markets here. Checking in with gold, getting a bit more constructive here on gold. I think we've got a, a five wave move versus this swing low here at 1784. And I think then that sets up, so that's going to be the first leg of this bigger uh, five wave pattern that I'm looking to uh, try and get involved in. So I think we get correction here. That will complete the bigger one, two. This will be our three. Another correction there, four. And I'm looking for a test now of the 1920 level 
uh, before we set uh, before we set a high here, and I think then we get another move to the downside. So um, see if we can get a pullback to test eighteen twenty eight as support. Bullish reversal patterns there on the long side, or if we take out these highs here at eighteen fifty five, then I think we're uh, we're ready for a run up to nineteen hundred eighteen ninety five. St uh, silver, sorry. Uh, again, got a nice little impulse here. Have, could have completed an ABC correction here. So if we take out this daily range resistance, uh, 2750 area, then I think we've got to run up to 2850 before another leg to the downside in terms of silver. Crude oil, been on a tear and uh, really boosted by this idea of uh, the reflation trade, the global recovery. Um, looking to play pullbacks in terms of crude, we have, I think we've got a three, four, uh, uh, sorry, we're in a wave four corrected phase here. Um, any pullback into 50, the 57 area with bullish reversal patterns, I think is an opportunity on the long side. And I'm really now, I was looking for $60. Now I'm looking for uh, 62.50 in terms of crude oil on the upside. Uh, for those uh, who don't follow me on LinkedIn or um, Instagram, I suggest you do. I posted a really interesting note from JP Morgan about the potential for a super cycle um, developing in terms of the energy sector. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to look at that, I suggest taking a look at my LinkedIn profile where I've, uh, where I've posted that today. Let's go. Uh, copper. So copper, again, uh, very bullish, this idea of the reflation trade, the global recovery. I think we're in this initial impulse lag, and I think there could be plenty of room on the upside here. Um, so what I'm looking for is to fade a wave five completion. We've got one, two, this is our three, four. And then I'm looking for a wave five into this $3.80 area. And, uh, and again, what do we want to see? Well, we're setting up for, uh, for some divergence to develop there. And so uh, watch for counter trend opportunity, short side. I think we get back into retest, certainly the 30, uh, 370 area, maybe even 360 before uh, watching for bullish reversal patterns to set uh, long positions. And if you can't trade copy yourself, you can use the uh, proxies like the Aussie or the Kiwi uh, as, uh, as good proxies for the copy market. And last but not least, everybody's favorite Bitcoin. Trading very technically now, as, uh, as I've discussed in prior weeks, and I'm looking for, uh, for a ping here of the 50,000 level. I think then we can see some, there should be some profit taking. And, uh, and again, we'll have that divergence there. I think we then get a retest of the prior highs at the 42,000 level before we can set a base to, uh, uh, to get ready for the next leg of upside in terms of, uh, of Bitcoin. Okay, those are the charts. Those are the levels I'm interested in. Those are where I see the opportunities as we head into the back end of this week and the beginning of next week. I think we've got some impulse legs completing in the FX majors and indexes. And I see the potential to play uh, some counter trend tactical short positions before realigning uh, with more dominant trends. Now, what I'd like to quickly do is open this up. If you've got any questions uh, with respect to any of the charts I've talked about, or you've got a chart you'd like me to take a look at that I haven't covered, you can either uh, raise your hand and I can unmute your mic or you can type the chart uh, into, uh, into the chat there and I'll, uh, I'll cover it up, I'll cover it for you. Um, oh, and or, like I said, if you're interested in, receiving, in viewing that article by JP Morgan about the super cycle in energy, uh, be sure to uh, tag me in LinkedIn and, I'll, and you can see that on my, uh, on my profile. So are there any questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, just type an N in the chat box so that I know uh, I, can, uh, I can wrap things up here for this week. Good stuff. Okay, guys, I'm, uh, I'm gonna wrap things up here and, um, and we will reconvene at the, uh, at the same time next week. Thanks very much, have a great weekend, I hope this helps.